that is not what we were looking for. Okay. I thought I was gonna throw up. Welcome back to The Blocks, the greatest show on entrepreneurship. What you'll see here is the largest live-in startup competition ever created. I'm excited, I'm game. I'm ready to get it started. The entrepreneurs are from all walks of life and they've been chosen from across the country to compete in an effort to crown themselves the best startup on the blocks. They're all coming to win. So we've decided that we're gonna make more money. Emotions will run high. What am I doing here? I can do this, I can do this, and now there are all these ideas. Stay focused. A bunch of these people aren't gonna win shit. Oh my gosh. Regardless, they're leaving with a new community, and this includes you. The entire thing is a 24 hour a day game. They'll be ranked from first to last place in real time throughout their entire experience with the current leaders wearing the red jersey. That is not what we were looking for. Okay. I thought I was gonna throw up. I'm walking into the lion's den. It was hard for me to do. And I did it, so I'm proud of myself. What we're going to attempt to do today is make you all start thinking like a technology company. The Blocks doesn't just test the entrepreneurs, but also empowers you, the viewers, with all the tools one needs to start the next great company. Iterate, change, evolve. Their game is your education, and it starts right now. Well, 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 what do we have here? Season five of The Blocks, and you guys just keep getting better looking every single season. So congratulations for that. I want to be the first one to welcome you guys to Kansas City, one of the most important entrepreneurial cities in the entire world, partly because you guys are all here right now together. I also want to thank you for the courage that it takes to get on a plane or drive across the country and to come to a place like this where you don't know anybody to do something that quite frankly you didn't have as much details as you probably should have. <laughs> and it takes a lot of courage just to step through that door and I promise you that it is gonna be worth it. But if you were like, oh, I'm a little nervous, I was a little scared, everyone was, it's normal, it's okay because what you did today is a, is a big step. Um, now we're gonna take it a whole hell of a lot further this week and there's gonna be a lot on that soon. Now as you know, this entire game is run by our esteemed judges. Give it up for our judges. Hello everyone, my name is Nemanja, but I do have an American name, which is Neiman, so it's totally fine if you can call me Nemanja or Neiman. Um, I was born and raised in Montenegro, which is a very small European country. I lived in a 10 different countries before I immigrated to the United States eight years ago. I currently live in Chicago, where I worked in the restaurant industry from the day one of arriving to the country uh, till I opened my own vegan restaurant called Kale, my name. I have a puppy. I still call him puppy. He's a year and a half now, but I think for me he's going to forever be puppy. His name is Kale. Go to the park for a, for a walk and uh, just enjoy uh, hanging out with other puppies and uh, I, I'm very passionate about traveling um, so I visited almost 100 countries and my goal is to visit the entire globe. My specialty I feel is marketing right even though I run a restaurant business I created Kale My Name to be more a brand so there is our merch being sold all over the country. I literally have people in Germany purchasing our merch. So my um, idea of, of running a business is creating it to be a brand. I think that's one of the strongest fields that I'm at. Um, so I'm going to try to focus on, on creating a brand out of the business and talking a little bit more about marketing, find somehow and take time to spend a, a, a personal time with each and every of these individuals. Because I felt like I didn't have a really a mentor and I just made it really hard. But they just didn't want to waste time on me. I was literally told, uh, oh, what's your, what's your capital? Like that's how they determined me as, a, as by my cap. What's your, what's your startup budget? And I would say, well, I don't have any. They're like, that would, we don't want to waste time and talking to you. So. It is so important for me to, to be 
for the people a, a person I did not have. <laughs> I want to serve to this project and be of purpose. Main thing that I'm nervous about, am I enough for everybody? There's definitely people who can learn a lot from me, but what if there is somebody that cannot? I'm gonna still try my best, but it's definitely concern in my mind. Class number one is about scaling the unscalable. It is very important for startups to understand scaling because they do want their business to grow, right? And they're not going to be able to do it as a, um, as, as a human being, right? That's why we have a technology and we were trying to figure it out where we can replace the human being for the, for the system, for the software, for the tool. If you don't have a story, you can't grow your business, you cannot sell, you cannot get more customers. So it's very important to, to start with it and to take it very seriously, but to add a little bit of personality to it. There was really good competition though, versus day one, people really stepped it up for day two. Consultations are always so fun and intense and that's the moments when I get to meet candidates a little bit better and talk to them, learn about their businesses. Like once you taste something and you see, oh okay, that's not as bad as I thought that that was going to be. How would you convince me to try it? Um, I mean, you got a free, it's a free sample. Come uh -huh. on. Like you, uh, you know, like if you look at the, like the bottle that I gave you, the chlorophyll that rejuvenates your blood, they have multiple purposes. And a lot of people, they don't get the nutrition that they need daily because of, you know, we live in America, most food is junk. <laughs> most of the stuff that's in the grocery store is junk. It doesn't give you nutrition. And my, you know, my product will. Wonderful. I so believe you in nutrition and I personally believe you in a taste, but I know that there is 90% of America that want, right? So a couple advices that I can do for you. Once you do those saying, oh, it's free, I don't think it's enough, right? Mm -hmm. But you can say things such as, let me surprise you, mm -hmm. or you would be surprised how delicious this is, right? right? I would, I would go for it. If you tell me, I, this is gonna surprise you how tasty it is, and let me tell you how good for it is, it would convince me more to try it than if you tell me, oh, it's free. Mm -hmm. There's many things that are free, right, but right, I don't right. want that's, them. That's very true. Locally focused food delivery service. I'm very excited about it. Oh, you are my perfect customer. I'm super excited to speak <laughs> to you today. Tell me your um, copywriting story or your brand. So, yeah, so um, the one thing, and I'm sure people have seen it all over the T-shirt, local delivery with a heart. Um, and so that is kind of where all of my copywriting has stemmed from, is knowing that I initially wanted to be that delivery service that stood apart from the other ones, not just because of pricing or all of those things that people look for, but because we have a heart and we care about the community. Wonderful. So I'm a restaurant owner, yes. right? You would love to have, to have me use your platform. How do you convince me? Uh, so, uh, to be honest with you, I know um, when I was looking at my website, and actually as soon as I opened up the, the slides of what today was going to be about, it immediately clicked to me that my website is geared more towards the people who are placing the orders and not the people they're ordering from. And so that was kind of what I learned today was, man, I'm really not focusing much on the restaurants, but without a restaurant, who are you going to order food from? So I really need to get that focus on. Um, and one of the things that I would do to convince you is give you the things that set us apart from using those bigger names. Um, for example, um, our commission fees. If you are a very tiny local restaurant who's just now opening your doors, you typically don't have the overhead to pay 30, 40, 50% to these larger corporations. I'll do it for free. I'll pass the cost on to the customer until you are at a point where you can start paying me instead. And that's 
keeping those local dollars in that local restaurant's pocket and not taking advantage of them for the sole purpose of getting some cooler customers in there. Okay, one thing is those bigger names mm -hmm. have a lot of audience, right? Yes. So a lot of small businesses, I remember when I was opening my business, before I even opened it, I was already on a big, on the, all four, the uh, GrabFab, DoorDash, yes. Kami, or Uber Eats, on all of them, because I wanted to put the message out. And that's part of their copywriting story, and that's part of their marketing. How do you feel that? How do you promise them that you can bring? Because like not everybody knows that small business, right? But they will right. find it on the GrabFab. How they will find it with you? Like, how do you compete that? How do I compete? So that's a really good question. So um, currently, I feel like I'm doing really well with the competition because in the city, our biggest city, um, we compete with all of them. And I own 37.6% of the market share of all delivery services. And when you're competing with nine different delivery services, I'd say that's a pretty significant number. And the way that I've mostly done that is um, exclusivity contracts. But to get the restaurant to me, mm -hmm. to even know that I exist, so, you know, when I initially launched my very first couple of weeks, I had seven restaurants and I needed to show them that my drivers are all background checked. They're all wearing those same tie-dyed orange crate t-shirts. It was mask time. They had orange crate branded masks. They looked like they belonged to a company. Um, DoorDash drivers, for example, I'm sure all of you have probably had a DoorDash driver come to your door. And I'm sure there are times you were thought to yourself, they let you deliver dressed like that? <laughs> My drivers are going to show up to your restaurant and have the same standard and care for their way they look as you expect out of your own um, employees as well. Wonderful. I'm very triggered by the exclusivity deals. Mm -hmm. As we talked about me as a restaurant owner, I, I, I do an exclusivity deal, right? Yes. Uh, but you know my, my ask scenes are r really high of course what what do you what do you offer for your uh for in exchange your for that exclusivity in exchange for exclusivity what could you offer me um so the number one thing that usually gets them in the door is if somebody googles your restaurant there will be a little button that pops up that says order delivery uh -huh. that order is an, automatically coming to me and that costs you nothing. I pay the you Google pay cost. For the I ad. pay for that ad to have that button there so that that comes to me okay. when they place order delivery. In addition to that, when you go exclusive with me, um, typically there's a cost associated with the tablet that sits up on the counter to get those orders going in. I cover that fee for you as well. So that tablet's free. You just put it on your counter. I'll make sure everything's coming in for you. In addition, I also provide um, all of your promotional materials. If you want to run free delivery for a week, I'm going to cover that free delivery cost. You're not paying for that. If you want um, to have an orange crate sticker that also has your logo on it, I will create it. The more you give me as the delivery service, the more I'm going to give you because the way I look at it is the more I'm promoting you, the more you're going to be willing to promote me. And it should be a symbiotic relationship to where we're both getting something out of it. You do a lot for free, though, and you, you pay for the advertising it takes. Where's, where's your profit coming from? So, um, and this is, might be an unpopular opinion, so for those of you that use delivery services, I apologize ahead of time. I'm of the belief if you're too lazy to go pick it up, it is not the restaurant's job to pay that for you. It is your job as the consumer. You're the one that wants to pick it up. Why are you paying for their laziness? That's just how I look at it. So if a restaurant can pay me commission because they want it to be cheaper for their customer, great. If they don't, and they are kind of of my view, then I'm going to charge you a little bit more because it's, you're the reason you don't want to get off the couch. It's not the restaurant's fault. Why are they paying for it? Wonderful. Wonderful. If, if I did not uh, sign this and did not have to give back this six digits deal <laughs> on exclusivity that I just closed, I would absolutely go with you. As oh, a, that means so much. You're going to make me cry. As, that means so much. As a so restaurant much. runner, you, you, you convinced me, right? You're offering a great <laughs> product. But listen, as a, as a customer, I, I would need a little bit more convincing. But that's yes. okay because you focused on me and I'm a restaurant in this place. Right. So you did a wonderful job as a customer. If I was a sitting at home and wanted to use your platform, I would go if it says free delivery, you know? Like, mm -hmm. right, so there, but there's completely a different topic. Yes. But Code try us for free delivery on your first order or subscribe for five ninety nine dollars a month and all of your deliveries are free. Just throwing that out there as a consumer as well. I got a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> good, good, good. So ready. I love it. Yes. Um, what's your What's your weak point? What are you from the class today? We're like, why am I not doing this? 
again, promoting, putting anything on my website that's going to drive restaurants. You open my website and it's initially, do we deliver to you? Not, yeah. do you want to be <laughs> delivered from? And so that was my number one thing was I've got to get, you, Wes mentioned landing page. I've got to get a landing page that directs restaurants specifically because right now all I have is go to orangecrate.com. Well, that's for our consumers. Uh -huh. I need a landing page that go to orangecrate.com slash restaurant and that will take you directly to what you need to know as a restaurant owner. So yeah, that was my biggest take from it is I need to get a landing page for restaurant owners. Wonderful. And um, how do you advertise? Like how do you reach uh, uh, people? Um, so we've done radio advertisements in the past. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with blip billboards. Uh -huh, yeah. um, I have a few blip billboards around our biggest city that are super, as business owners, please look into blip. It is super inexpensive compared to a billboard. I love them. Um, so we do blip billboards. I'm in a couple of local magazines. Um, and then when I initially started, the local news, Fox News station reached out to me and, because they saw what we were doing through COVID for the local community and they asked me for an interview and they re-air it several times a that's, month, so. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, oh, and then, uh, go, I feel like I already asked you some hard questions, but do you, <laughs> what do you feel from, from your customers or, or consumer, consumers, people who are gonna order the food or from restaurant owners that are working with you? What's the hard question you get from them? Um, probably the hardest question I get, I, I'll say it is from the actual people ordering um, what's this fee? That is the, the number one question I get all the time. What is this fee? Mm -hmm. um, because what is it? It's the service <laughs> fee. Uh -huh. And that's how I make money. Okay. Um, and the way I explain it to customers, because if you use another site, odds are you're not going to see anything labeled service fee. It'll just say taxes and fees or something like that. I'm very big on transparency. That service fee lets the customers know you're paying me to do a job for you. Um, I don't mark up the cost. I don't roll it into the food cost. I want the rest of the customers to understand that this amount that you're paying for the food, that's what this guy's making. This thing that says service fee, that's what I'm making. So complete transparency. And so when I explain it to them in that way that, yeah, you're paying a little bit more for me, but your favorite local restaurant got to keep its doors open during COVID because I was doing this for free for them. I'm Amber Taggart. I am a professional organizer with a master's of science in clinical mental health. And so it's kind of a weird thing to do for a living, um, but I really love it. Started a company called The Organizer Chick, singular, in 2011, and now it's The Organizer Chicks. And we have a flock of 17 chicks, mm -hmm. and we help people to declutter, create organization, and manage their time. Wonderful, how do you do that? Oh, wow, well, first of all, by having the most amazing people mm -hmm. on staff of the company. That is what it's all about. Everything we do is about and with and for people. So we attract really wonderful people. And truthfully, I'm a very good organizer. I'm, I do a lot of public speaking and I'm good at that. But the thing that I'm the very best at is recognizing awesomeness in people and attracting them to me and then keeping them around me. And so the way I do that is by building like a really awesome team the vast majority of which has been with me for a really long time. And when you treat people well and you pay them great and you let them work according to the days and hours that work for their schedule so that they can be the mothers and the daughters and the volunteers they want to be and you pay them well, they will be incredibly loyal to you. So Wonderful. That's um, amazing. From the days, today's class, uh, what was your weak point? Honestly, there were several that, mm -hmm. that stood out. I think. Um, and I actually wrote some notes about this. There were some things I was like, I have to implement some things. Mm -hmm. um, one was certainly those clear call to actions. Mm -hmm. I think I realized to, in today's class that everything on our website was the way I think, which is very linear mm -hmm. because I'm a boring organizer, right? I'm very um, organized in my thoughts. And so it's very tab oriented. We go here and then we go click this tab and we click this tab. Um, but I, this idea of kind of oscillating through things, um, I think really speaks to the way that the average person kind of takes in information and shops around through information. And so that was something that really stuck out to me that we need to do a better job of that for sure. And then another thing that really stuck out to me, and this was actually something I kind of wanted to ask your opinion about, is we do not really have um, our credibility displayed very well. Um, and I've, I've done some cool things, like I've been published in Forbes and Today, and I've done a TEDx, 
Um, so there are some labels that I get to that I get to use. But in, in this, I don't know if it's okay. Can I ask a question of now? Course. Is that okay? All right. Um, the problem if you Google, you know, TED Talk, mm -hmm. it's going to be Amber Taggart, not the organizer chicks. Mm -hmm. Can the company borrow? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, can absolutely. I loan? As you as a person were featured. I right? own the company. Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah. So absolutely. Okay. And that has to be your first thing. Don't you see every single social media platform you open and then the first thing says featured on Forbes, right? Okay. So that's something that you absolutely need to display. You should be okay. very proud of it. It's a big deal. Well, yeah. Not whatever makes okay. the hardest for you when people ask you, like, oh, how do I answer this? Yeah. Well, maybe just why do, well, who needs a professional organizer might be one of those that's like, you know, actually let me change my mind. No, tell me. Let I'll me respond that question now. Right. Who needs <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 the answer is probably everybody. Almost everybody, if it's the trunk of your car, if it's your calendar and your time management, um, the average American is wasting 17 minutes a day uh -huh. looking for things they've lost or misplaced. And that is on average, right? So that adds up to a year, a full calendar year of life. Um, of being frustrated running around looking for your keys, mm -hmm. of yelling at your kids because someone can't find their left shoe. Um, so through the magic of decluttering and organization, we can help you to avoid that and have more peace and productivity. So, you know, I think everyone could use organization in some area of their life for Wonderful. sure. Wonderful. A hard question, very simple answer. Everybody. <laughs> but the thing is, outside of the website, what else can right. you do? So certainly word of mouth is amazing and wonderful. Um, and certainly we are also on social media. We've never done any paid advertising on social media, but I'm starting to see how incredibly powerful that could be. Um, yesterday our coach said, basically in the most loving and kind way, it's ridiculous that you don't have a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. Because every single day of, that we're working, we're creating a small television show. Yeah. There's, it's the whole story arc is there. There's a problem, there's a client who has clutter and is stressed out and we're solving that problem. There's a before, there's an after, you need to have a YouTube channel. I'm recording a podcast already. Mm -hmm. Turn that camera on and like record yourself talking, you're personable and people would listen to that and watch it. So. Um, I, I think that's in the future, to answer your in the future question, I think that's going to be something we're going to also start doing. Uh -huh. But we also have some vehicles that we've wrapped uh -huh. and um, we have a, a, v, a car, a van and an enclosed trailer and they're polka dotted and they're yellow and they say the organizer chicks mm -hmm. and they're, below, they're like little yes. celebrities. We get talked about, I mean, I cannot go get a sweet tea without like somebody asking you like, mm -hmm. hey, tell me about these chickens on the side of your car. They're so cute. <laughs> so that's been these like great little mobile ambassadors for us too. And other than that, it's really public speaking events and workshops and things like that that have been our, our good advertising pieces. There was a lot of improvement today. You guys are getting it. Choosing the winners is really hard because you have so many different people that in various ways deserve to be in that spot. All of us judges are a little bit nervous because we are seeing our candidates not performing as great as they did um, inside of the rooms, right? I just felt like the points were kind of missed a little and people didn't fully get what tax stacking was. I think it was made easier by the blocks to to help you navigate on how many points and this should be my winner. So not necessarily that I, that I expected, oh, like, oh, you are the winner. But later on, when I went through the point by point, then I figured out, okay, this, this feels, and feels right. Neiman, he's like, I've never seen scores so low. <laughs> I was like, oh God, am I really being that tough? No. So what they're going to be doing tonight is they are indeed going to be going through their copywriting checklist, obviously, but we're going to be doing so in a different canvas than the website. They're going to be pitching us on how they're going to make an about us video for their, for their website or social or wherever. It doesn't matter where it sits, but we want to see the copywriting checklist infused into the video. What has happened with little time to prepare and the nerves as they get up here and they just recite the afternoon's presentation. That's not what we're looking for because they've all proven that they can rifle off the checklist for a website, but can they pivot on a dime? That's going to be what we're kind of testing for. Everyone was like really, really a little nervous and the challenge was 10 times harder and some people have no artsy film skills at all. So asking them to make a commercial, I think was difficult. Action. Sam is scrolling through his phone. 
He then sees a Facebook notification of a birthday he should have known. He goes, oh shit, should have remembered that moment. And you just see it on his face. Then a big black text comes on the screen. Before your next event, we'll remind you of what you'd forget. Beto texts you reminders before and on your birthday and those events with links to gift ideas. So instantly get hits with an instant clarity headline and then the solution. He just experienced the problem by himself and you can see it on his face. He goes, hmm, seems intriguing. You can just see him thinking. Then he'll see the solution, the benefit of the solution coming up. He will then save time because he's getting gift ideas and he doesn't have to worry about finding them. He's gonna save money because he knows he's gonna be getting them a gift that they're actually going to like. And then he knows his ass has been saved because he actually remembered this. There was just like a wave of like emotion and like confidence that just like came over me and I just like really stepped into myself. I just like kept locking eye contact with people who were supporting me in the crowd and that just kept my energy going. And I walked on like, this was so much fun. I felt really in my element and it was just, it was a lifetime experience. It was amazing. Then we'll end it with a frequently asked question of, can't I just do this myself? And then we'll be like, if you're still watching this video, clearly you haven't done it before and you need a little bit of help. Let's go ahead, save you some time, save you some money. It was honestly incredibly fun. I mean, I was born kind of missing that thing that says be afraid to speak in front of people. Um, and so it was incredibly fun. I really, I like a challenge and this was a challenge. To start out, I'm going to show you in her home an overwhelmed, cluttered mom with kids and chaos going on all around her. She is going to declare the problem. She's going to say, I'm overwhelmed. I am stressed out by all this chaos and I feel like a failure. I keep trying and I cannot have a Pinterest pantry. I don't know what is wrong with me. The camera is going to zoom back to me with my whole flock of chicks, all 17 of us working diligently to make her home better in the background. I'm going to say the organizer chicks is going to help you shake a tail feather at stress and clutter and say hello to peace and productivity. Our flock is going to bring in non-judgmental help to help pair the correct products and services and to help you get educated on how to maintain the order and the chaos so that you can have peace and productivity. And then I'd like to pan over to another mom for some testimonial. This one, who's a lot more calm. She's a lot more happy, she's put together. She's a mom who's already worked with the organizer chicks in the past. And she's gonna come in and she's gonna share how her life is better. It's, oh gosh, the average American wastes 17 minutes a day looking for items they've lost or misplaced and that adds up to a year of your lifetime. And in a year, the average American is making about $54,000 a year. We cost way less than $54,000. Hire the organizer chicks as the FAQs. Who needs an organizer? Everybody. The first person that came out, I literally looked at the judge next to me and I'm like, I don't know how we're going to get better than that. And then the next one, it was like, oh my gosh, that's pretty doggone close. And then the next one, it's, that may be better than the first one. Everyone that came on brought a level of presence and dynamic energy that I hadn't seen from the night before. So it kind of threw me off guard a bit. I feel everyone was so happy and generally impressed by the six winners. Their, their pitches were so, so good that I, I literally think that everybody was feeling like, I'm so grateful I did not win today because like I could not stand there and compete. Bring them back out. <laughs> Beto, yes. when you finished, I asked Vest if we can go home because <laughs> I thought that was it. You crushed it. <laughs> It was so good. Your energy, it's so addictive and I want to spend some time with you. Uh, but then she took the stage. <laughs> uh, and uh, I want to start with saying that I'm a little bit sorry for my snap after all the pitches, but I had the assignment and I would love actually the audience to help me. On a count to three, we're going to all say she understood the assignment. Okay? <laughs> One, two, 
three. She understood the assignment. Chicks, winner of the second night. <laughs> everybody knew, everybody knew when she finished that, that that's it. If she didn't win, there would be something wrong there, right? Because we would be like, what, what are these judges doing then? Like, why did she not win? This is my environment, hustle and work hard. I'm saving up my money just to buy me a sports car. Damn. Help those that need it if you need it, repeat it. This is the dopest live flow, you can dig it or beat it. You're now rocking with the best, so brother number two. Night and poke with another win for the whole crew. Spreading joy to the city with these beats and rhymes. Got me feeling like a motherfucking beast sometimes. Literally a life changing experience. And there, there's like, I feel, like a lot of people that I'm getting a chance to talk to are literally telling me like, oh, I'm, I'm changing completely from the, from the website to, to branding, to a lot of things that are just gonna help them grow. So I really think they're living with a new life. If there's a potential that your pitch, let's say it's a little bit boring, what could you do to make it more fun? I don't pitch boring, but, oh. but what I will say is, the fear for mine is the fear of the unknown. People don't know that they need a selfie studio. Uh -huh. You know, they just think, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, wait, what is this? Uh -huh. Do I need a camera? Do I need a photographer? No, you need you and you need your cell phone. And my ring lights and my sets will do all of the work for you. But I have to, my pitch has to be a little bit longer so mm -hmm. that I can explain that to them. Wonderful. It's pretty straightforward though. I, I, I like it. You would think so. You, but so you many brought me to my aha moment very quick. Okay, like, good, good. Yeah. Well, that's the goal. Uh, I learned some things today to do that. So good. good. I was into recruiting and hiring and therapist training because there is a national therapist shortage. Say right now anywhere between like 30 and 100,000. Well, well, well. The very last night. And oh, what a night it is. It's fundraising night. Night. This was a pretty rough topic for some of y'all. I was very impressed and surprised with some of y'all, and then others that I expected to thrive. I heard bomb today. So um, there's that. So congratulations to both sides, whichever one you find yourself on. Without further ado, allow me to introduce the judges. Come on out. All right. Up first, Orange Crate. Call Patty. Hello, my name is Patty Moreno. The organizer chicks. Yeah. You, you want to win your pod every single day, but especially day five. It was really fun to know like this was our last shot to score that last day's worth of points. So winning the pod today felt like a really big deal. It was nice. This is gonna be brutal, so get the fuck out of my stage. Uh, I was the first one to go, so I had just caught my breath from realizing I had won and then immediately was taken into it. So it is nerve wracking, but um, super fun. You are going to be giving us a two minute investment pitch. Each and every single person that is coming tonight is going to hear a different scenario that all six of the judges are gonna be pretending to be. In that scenario, they're gonna say who they are, what they are, risk appetite, that kind of thing. It's gonna be very short. The two minute presentation has to convince them to try and invest as well as, and more importantly, explain the deal structure that matches who they are, that kind of thing. And then after the two minutes, there's three minutes of follow up questions. My name is Tom. I went to college with you. I'm 30 years old and I work in finance. I make about $100,000 a year. I live in the Midwest. I have a small nest egg and I'd like to diversify. Um, so I know you're looking to diversify your portfolio and I feel like food delivery is the way to go when it comes to diversifying your portfolio, mainly because it's never gonna go out of style. We've all seen what happened when other delivery services started up and it hasn't gone anywhere in years and years and years. Somebody's always gonna need to get something delivered. So what I'm hoping to do is get a little bit of that nest egg that you've already got saved up and have that put into the company um, 
in exchange for a 15% return. We're currently in the growth stage right now. We're already hitting the six-digit margin as far as what our, um, our gross um, income is at this point. And I feel like having your little nest egg, getting you that 15% return is really going to be equally uh, beneficial for both of us. And with that little nest egg that you give me, we'll be able to expand into other cities and possibly update our technology to be able to deliver to our customers faster and more efficiently. May not be the right answer, but it's the honest one. I initially thought that I had bombed my pitch in the blocks off, but I feel like I did better than I thought I did. My name is Calvin and I'm your grandfather. I am retired. I want to see you succeed. Grandpa Calvin, uh, I just want to let you know over the last several decades, you've obviously been watching me grow and learn and become a physical therapist. And uh, the last uh, two years, I've been building a practice. And I'm at a very specific juncture in my life right now where if I was to get about $5,000, I would actually be able to put together a specific program to replace myself to go and spend more time with my family. And I know you love your, grand, your great grandkids and I know that you love uh, what I'm doing and you believe in me. And I really would love it if you could partner with me in, in this venture so that I can buy some of my time back and spend time with you and, and your great grandkids together. I only have 5,000 and I'm gonna give it to you uh, and I'm not expecting it back, right? But I want you to make me proud. What if you don't? What is the risk? What if you give me a heart attack? Uh, I'm an old man. Uh, Grandpa, I, I will tell you this. You, you've seen me fail in the past. You've seen me fail three or four times in the past. Uh, I might fail again. I could disappoint you. Uh, but at the same time, you know where my heart is, you know who I want to serve, and you know my motivations. And so I'm not going to sit here and promise you that I can do it, but I do know I feel right about this. And I'm going to work, ever, work so hard to make sure that your investment, at the very least, if the outcome isn't good, the hard work that you see me do is going to be worth it. Okay, plot twist, I'm already proud of you. I know. <laughs> So uh, being in the blocks off, even especially tonight, I lost my, my really close grandmother um, two years to the week this week. And so it took me a little bit to gain my composure um, because I actually just imagined myself talking to her uh, and asking her for money and she would have rained me with so much money. Uh, and so for me to be able to have what I felt like was an easy question was, it, it gave me a lot of peace, so. All right, my name is Sarah and I am your sister-in-law. I have been watching old clips of Mr. Wonderful and Grant Cardone and they always talk about passive income, which I think would be cool. Okay, so you were asking about passive income. I think Alpari is a really good investment for you. We have monthly payments coming every month that brings commission to our company every month. That's steady and already set up. We have automatically renewals in our insurance policy. As you well know, you are my sister-in-law. You know that I'm doing insurance. You have seen how, how well I'm doing already. It's already an established company with eight years in the making. When you invest your money with me, I can guarantee to you that you're gonna have a profit and a residual for a long period of time since our customers are renewing in average five years at a time. So for each customer that we sell, we haven't retained for five years. So imagine that times a thousand customers that we help per year. Your money is safe with me. How much money do you need? Uh, it depends how much do you want to own my company. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to give me $100,000, it will be 5% of the company and in, uh, it will be a revenue. So every year you will receive 5% of the revenue in the company. Indefinitely. If you invest, yes, indefinitely. So for 100K, you will sell me 5% of your company. Uh, let's put it, let's put in a cup. Because <laughs> I'm doing you really good. <laughs> I knew we were up for a doozy. I knew it was the final night. I knew it was about fundraising. And that's a little bit anxiety inducing. My name is Penny and I'm your best friend. I'd like to support your startup, but I'm not all that rich. 
is there any way for me to support you and maybe make a little bit of money in the process? Hey, Penn. <laughs> oh. Listen, thanks for kind of doing this weird thing where we're going to step outside, not really of our friendship, but just step into this other world for half a second. And I never, never, never want to risk our friendship. I want to say that first and foremost. But I want you to know what I'm doing with the organizer chicks, and I want you to kind of catch the vision because it is very important to me if you're thinking about kind of coming along for this ride with me that you get the vision, that we're on the same page, and that you're comfortable with where your money's going and with what we are gonna be able to do together with that. Because I know that you've told me that you're good for about 20,000, and so if that's still an amount that you're comfortable with, I would love to borrow that $20,000 from you. And here's what I'd like to ask. I'd love it if we could do a payment cliff of one year with that, so that I could have about a year to get really established, and I, what I wanna do with that is I wanna replicate exactly what we have going on in Northwest Arkansas. We've been here going on 11 years now, and we figured something out that's really strong and really good, and we just want to duplicate those exact systems in other markets. And with your $20,000, we're going to be able to do that, and we're going to pay you back with interest. I'd like to talk in detail about what feels comfortable for you with that, and I think that we're going to be able to both get you some... Okay. I love it. You know I'm, I'm a huge fan of your business. How much? What do you think about an 8% loan? An 8%. No. No. Okay, what? Then this is your turn. I'd love to hear what feels good to you, Penny. No, offer me something better. Okay, how about 10%? 10% and the knowledge that you're helping other women just like you. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> you believe strongly that you can return the original 20000 within one year. That's enough time for you to get started in Memphis, let's say. Definitely do, based on how much we've been making year over year for nearly 11 years now. Would you be interested in having an agreement whereby, if that's truly successful in year one, that we're able to replicate that for five consecutive years? I would. At the same interest rate, or could we tie that to inflation? I'd, I'd want to say let's stick to the same interest rate. Amber, as you know, I'm not rich, but I am a good friend of yours and I want to see you win. But honestly, can you please fully disclose all of my risks that are involved with the $20,000? Absolutely. So I want to always be a straight shooter with you because our relationship is really, really important to me. And the truth of the matter is there is a chance you could lose it all, right? I mean, I, I guess there's a chance in that anytime you're investing in a person and in a business, but I, I would definitely like, I'll, I will put my a vehicle on the line. <laughs> like, I'll, I will not let you lose this money. All I know, and all any of us know, when we do a blocks off is how we did. I don't get to compare myself against anybody else. And that's difficult because at the end of the day, it's really all that matters is how did I do compared to the way that everybody else answered the questions. So it's really difficult to know, like, how did I do? But I'm gonna sleep well tonight, no matter how this all turns out, because I feel like I, I did well. Come on out. Well, 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 we're done. There is no more testing. There is no more pitching. This week, as far as an academic situation, is over. The game is over. You cannot score any more points. Y'all should be incredibly proud of yourself. We saw very impressive things all week. With that said, let's get into some individual awards that have nothing to do with the points at all. This is just me calling out four individual companies in two categories. One is most valuable and one is most investable. Most valuable is in if each one of you were to sell your business tomorrow, who do I think would get the most for it? Which largely has a lot to do with revenue, profit, as well as who the jockey is in charge. The most investable startup has a little bit of similar things with the exception of we're looking for a bit more scale, a little bit more um, a, a, a kind of growth potential along the, uh, the hockey stick is what we're looking for. First up, ProMobile. I mean, you are a badass. 
you were continually getting thirds and second places and getting close calls throughout this week. I have a lot of faith more than anything in you. Your business is doing well, it's thriving, but it's you. It doesn't matter what you're selling, I'm buying. To come in this, you know, day after day, and then you know, find this at the at the end of the competition is is um, very gratifying and uh, very very humbling as well. All right. Next up, next level security. Your scores in this, in this particular game does not reflect my trust in you as the harborer of your business. It does not reflect your, where you're at in your business. It does not reflect whether or not I would want to be a customer of yours. It is a yes, 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 yes to everything that anyone could ask about when it comes to you as the leader of your business, that you are going to not only take over your industry in Texas, but beyond. It's, it's super cool. I, I, I didn't expect it. Um, I, I felt like I was doing good, you know, the whole time. And, and, and um, day one, I got frustrated because I, I, I didn't win the day or whatever. But then I told myself, you know, it's a competition against yourself. As long as you get home and, and your business is better than you won. And I had that mindset the rest of the time. Um, and I felt really good about every day and, and being here. So it's super humbling that I won and it's super cool. I love it. All right, our first up for most investable. Nax. Congratulations. All right, let's start with the fact that you're incredibly lovable and I want to bet on you. But then let's get into the real nitty gritty of this. You have a passion about independent films. You took that passion and then you took your own money, a great deal of money to spend on a technology platform that at scale can deploy independent films, which is one hell of a beachhead, to the world. It can grow overnight without needing a ton more inputs, which means you are incredibly scalable. And you're not being all things to all people. You're saying we are this particular thing. You came with great questions. You scored a lot of points throughout this, which showcase your well-roundedness. And you are the type of jockey that we like to bet on. That's just confirmation for me because the entire time that I was here, a lot of people were just coming up to me just like, you know what, whenever you are ready, uh, I wanna know when you are gonna be on a penny stock so I can get my, my dibs in. And you know, I'm like, they just been coming up to me and really excited. And I'm excited that other people are excited because they see my vision is clear. And I, that, that means that I'm doing something right. All right, next up, Malden Cabinetry. All right, I had the distinct pleasure of being the one that cast you, and you proved yourself throughout this entire week. You started at the very near the top and stayed that way is because you're proving in every single room that you were either winning or getting second or at worst third place in every pod throughout the week. And that shows such a well-roundedness in what we were trying to test. Not to mention, let's be honest with ourselves, when we're selling to homeowners and their kitchens and, their, and the art and the functional art in their homes, this is a very profitable business. And you are the man for the job. Very meaningful because it means that, that Wes, because he picked that one, uh, believes in, in me enough that you know, my company and in myself uh, that he would choose me for that, which is just an enormous honor and a complete shock. I didn't think that there was any chance that I would get that uh, with all these companies here. In no particular order, these are the runners up. Beto, Malden Cabinetry, the neurodiverse teacher. Uh, it feels really surprising. I wasn't expecting to get anything other than uh, new connections, friendships. <laughs> I can't. I am like, I can't do stop crying. I am like, so many happy tears. I absolutely adore all three of you. You're so incredibly smart. You're so educated that I just gonna, you're just gonna do great. And I thank you for spending time with me. I, I really appreciate it. I learned a lot from you. You have, you are part of the brand. The puppy, the dog, the whole lightheartedness. It's, it's a whole way of life and it's a whole culture thing. Semi up in the clouds, but feet on the ground thing. And guess what? Most people can't do it at the same time. 
They can't. You're able to get people excited, but also do business. That's going to help you as you uh, unfold as a businesswoman when you're older. So way to go. I'll say I had all three of you, and I think the one thing that stands out to me outside of business acumen and, and the way you performed was your determination. And I think whether it's you taking every angle to figure out every way to win, whether it was you trying to work with those that you knew were close and trying to figure out where they were at and how you were going to get there, or whether it was you and your conversation after one of the times that you didn't win your pod and saying that motivated me more to get it tomorrow. I think that's what makes you guys stand apart and do not lose it. I wasn't expecting any of that when I came out here. I truly thought of this as a great opportunity to just learn. I was really surprised right from the beginning that I was winning anything and then the fact to get this far and with this many great people uh, be able to come up as runner-up is fantastic. I am just like this everyday girl like who works a full-time job, walks her dog, goes to the gym, like nothing special and I just sit in my room at night and work on this and like looking back like I had four years of just I I've had this idea for so long and just so much doubt and every single excuse and I was like, I'm going to be so mad if I don't try and the fact that I try, I've been trying for a year and like this just happened, like I, I'm just so beyond proud of myself and just like it really shows when you believe in yourself and if you're brave enough to try, it is worth every single hardship that you go through. These are three champions the winners of the blocks, the people that have gotten all the way to the top after a very long trying week. Renew. The organizer chicks. Behind the scenes agency. Holy cow. Just won the blocks. Feels amazing. I'll be honest. Like I'm humbled. Uh, I'm gracious. I'm grateful. Um, I did not think for a second I was going to win. Being down a block. Oh, win, win. Look at this. Win, win. <laughs> win, win. Wow. No one even wearing the red jersey. I've had the great pleasure to spend a considerable amount of time with all three of you outside of my cohort and I've learned some things that I want to share with you. There are core values in becoming a successful entrepreneur, business acumen, intelligence, savviness, but most importantly humility. The ability to know when to step down and take advice and to let other people speak and to listen. And the way that the three of you guys have approached me and expressed your needs, become vulnerable with your personal situations, and allow me to come in and share with you my experiences has really been a blessing to me to learn from as well. So thank you all. Uh, Renew, I, you're extremely talented, so I absolutely have a faith in you and your business. You're very smart, so you're gonna do great. Go for that franchising we, we talked about. Good job, congratulations, I'm so proud of you. You have an approach that is truly different. It's, it's holistic. Um, the things you practice are a lot of ancient, almost techniques that people have just not used in a long time and aren't being taught anymore. When I was coming in here, I thought to myself, hey, as long as I don't make myself look like a fool, I'll do well. And uh, I really came here for the education. I really came here to meet the people and the connections, uh, the judges. Uh, a lot of that was my motivation. And, and although I'm a very competitive person, uh, the game was still secondary in my heart. And then for me to, to actually be recognized as, as one of the, the top, top winners, uh, is, uh, it's very humbling. Girls, uh, it's just, it's so much of, of, of what I do and it's so much of a branding there in, in your businesses that I'm absolutely in love with. 
when I when I, I just your your energy, your passion, your beauty, it's just so extraordinary. I have a special place in my heart and I've had convos with you and your partner quite a few times and I said at some point you're either going to have to do this to expand and keep doing it the way you're doing it or you're going to have to niche in like I did and you guys are going to go out and I think that's awesome. Keep traveling to Africa, keep doing the things you're doing, keep shooting music videos for celebrities and um, paving the way for women in the music industry. Please keep doing that. It's really like a dream come true. I know that sounds cliche, like who is like, oh, I'm going to be the winner of the blocks. But the real dream was really seeing how our business could come together and thrive. I just want to thank Wes for even taking the time out to bring all this together for us. Um, I have a problem with public speaking and coming here has given me the opportunity to um, be better at that. It's helped me deliver um, be able to speak better in front of the audience, so I, I'm very thankful to be here. I would riot if you were not standing here tonight. <laughs> uh, I am in love with you. It's been just great. Working with you was absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for making me so proud. If, if there's any way we can work, invest, anything, I want to do business with you. I would invest in your dang business. It is so solid, it is so everything. You understand marketing, you've completely encompassed it. From the outfit, to the attitude, to the everything in between, you are the full package. Great job, great job. There were so many, many amazing, really, really smart, yes. super talented, like awesome people and businesses out there. So to be able to have that little blocks trophy, it is seriously getting a very, very special place in my office. As you guys can tell, I put a lot into this. Everything, really. I mean, I shut my entire life down for months and months to kind of put this all together. The things that I've had to turn down to be here um, are, are once in a lifetime opportunities to the average person. But to me, is it an incredibly easy decision. You all have filled up my cup this week in a way that is very, very challenging to describe. I have been obsessed with entrepreneurship in this county for a little over 30 years. And to have you all here going through this platform, working together, collaborating, bettering yourselves, transforming yourselves, and leaving as significantly better than when you came, the fact that you guys can make me feel like this it's just so unfair and I owe you all forever because of it. So on behalf of our city, my wife and my family, and the blocks, thank you so much. We're out. Bye! It was a blast. Uh, it was definitely different than what I expected it to be, but better than what I expected it to be. I am so glad that I came here. Best investment. And I just couldn't stop smiling. And all of the things that I have walked away with. All right, Wes, I just want to thank you so much for having us here on the show, man. Uh, I just got to come back to the crib again. You got to let me in so that we can play pool, so I can bust you in pool. You know, it's gonna be a great time, but uh, yeah, man, I just wanna thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> we were pretty small as far as our outreach to letting people know who we are. However, with the blocks and the viewers that they have, uh, I, want a lot, I want everybody across the world to know who Solar Screen Distribution is. Really, I came here in a stage of my business that I was getting intimidated by the next steps, and this really gave me the building blocks, the exact step-by-step -step directions to go back and not make those things basic. I hope that the viewer learns, you know, the essentials about business. These are the things that help us grow as a business, help us brand ourselves, and really get motivation going for those around us who want to be involved.
imagining like, oh, what would be the worst? Like, I'm stuck in Kansas and I don't know what to do and I'm not having fun and maybe I shouldn't do it. And I was thinking, what could be the best? Like, I could learn something, have fun. It exceeded everything I could ever imagine that this uh, uh, experience would bring to me. It was definitely one of the best in my life. I learned so much. It was amazing to, to feel so relatable because we are all in the, in, in the, in the same problems but also in the same rewards so it just absolutely been amazing to know each and every of you i'm so grateful to the other judges i literally feel like those are some of my best friends which is so weird but considering that we are in this week so focused on on this i forgot who my family is this is my family <laughs> this, is, this is my family in this moment and and all of you i'm just you're a star. You're just so much better than I could imagine. So um, I'm, I'm so grateful, you know, that, that, that I'm here. And I know I, uh, oh, oh, one thing is not all of you get to be in my pod. And I know that's so not fair to you. And I'm so, so sorry about that. And I feel like I should have a separate personal um, uh, pod. So just so all of you can experience the love that I also came to give rather than just a knowledge. Thank you for the hugs. Thank you for the tears. Thank you for the laughs. Thank you for the good time. Thank you for the knowledge that I got from all of you. I love you and I'm so proud of you. Aww.